Welcome back to my Tetris Select tutorial. Uh, I'm still very sick. <laughs> I was expecting to be better by now, um, but I've just been really weak. So, so um, I did make a little bit of progress. So um, I'm going to show you where I got. I moved the rest of the code uh, for the rotations and stuff in here. Um, but that's not really what I wanted to show off. Uh, I'm not even sure I'm going to keep the rotation in the game. Um, the main thing I wanted to show was that uh, this is mostly an update for mobile. Um, but what I did was I added the ability to uh, drag and drop a Tetramino from the play area uh, that's in play, the in play Tetramino onto like a mesh into the hold area. And the reason for that is because on mobile, um, I don't really have like a good way to do like a swap um, of a Tetra Minnow, like a hold or a swap. Uh, so what I decided to do was like as you're moving your finger around on the um, uh, on the player board, uh, I put a mesh off to the right where the hold Tetra Minnow goes. And then when you lift your finger off, uh, it will swap it into place. You know what? It's probably better if I um, show you what I'm talking about first and then the code will probably make more sense. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and build this and I'll be right back with a quick demonstration uh, and then we'll dig into code. Okay, here we go. All right, so um, over here, I just added a mesh. Um, that's all it is at the moment. And now when I drag and drop, it will move it over there. Um, I can switch between ones that are in play. As long as there is a Tetramino in play, the slice will not change. Uh, I also set it to right click will change the... Um, We'll swap them out. And uh, that's about it. That's all I wanted to cover. Uh, so let's go into my blueprints because there were some uh, things in here that needed to be adjusted. Oh, not the game mode. You want to go into actors and then the player board. Alright, forward, okay, so uh, I just added a new mesh, I called it hold mesh, um, all it is is just a standard cube straight from the engine, and um, I just resized it, I made it five times the scale in the Z and the X, and one tenth the scale on the Y. Um, but the other thing that needed changed was this back plate, uh, the input rape cast collider. Um, I took it and I also scaled it down to one tenth the scale and then I moved it back. It was in the center and um, now it is back by uh, at 50. Yeah, I was at 50. Um, all right, so and the reason for that is is that um when it it used to be I think it was fifty thick um I set up the collision on this mesh to be custom and it ignores everything except for visibility uh and this one is also set up exactly the same, so when it was thicker it was colliding with the ray cast um, before this little hold plate did. And um, and that's no good, it's not gonna trigger. Uh, I didn't bother with like a, a collision volume or anything like that, considering it is just, you know, a cube static mesh. Um, I could go ahead and use the uh, complex collision on there and then i just gave it the same material the uh, black clear coat um as the actual board itself all right uh so now that you know what it does let's jump back over to code um 
I don't remember if this stuff was in here before. Uh, I actually, I'm having trouble with the mobile build and I'm not sure what the issue is. I cannot get it to deploy to my phone anymore. It works fine in the, um, in the editor, uh, Android, um, uh, virtual machine. Um, but it will not deploy to my phone anymore. And as far as I can tell, I did not change any settings or anything like that. Um, furthermore, I can't get anything to deploy, uh, even test projects and everything. I tried uninstalling Unreal Engine. I went in and deleted all the files that are left behind in the Android SDK and everything once you're in, uninstalled. Um, so I made, I went from absolutely from nothing all the way up to installing, uh, Android and, uh, running the Android, um, uh, set up batch script for Unreal Engine. And no matter what I do, it will not deploy to my phone anymore. So mobile is on hold for now, even though uh, I really only wanted this game for, for mobile. That's where I play it the most. Um, but yeah, so uh, one of the things, one of the errors that it was throwing was it does not like when you have an if statement and you declare a variable inside the if statement at the same time as testing it. So it will blow up with that. So I removed the HUD ref and stuck it in its own if statement and assigned it separately. And that cleared up that error, um, but it just like says it's deploying and then it hangs and nothing. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's a big issue right now. Uh, but anyway, so in previous videos, we had this uh, swap hold bind action here. Um, all I did was I uncommented that, uh, but I also set up a new. Um, function for the set tetramento set tetramento move direction ending cursor and set tetramento move direction ending touch uh this was previously two different bindings that just called the same function and now they call different function and the reason for that is down in the functions themselves so this is the uh cursor one um, so now this used to just, uh, be this little bit of code here, um, checking if the slice is ending, uh, setting the board status to drop in and dropping the, you know, but now we do, uh, the raycast, the git collision under cursor. Um, and then we're getting, uh, we're casting the out hit result component to a mesh if that mesh, mesh exists we're checking if it equals to the hold mesh that we declared and uh set up in the blueprint that little hold plate if it is then we're calling swap hold and doing an early return if it doesn't hit any of that then we're just doing the same stuff as before um for the touch for mobile, it just handles it exactly the same. Get hit result at position. Um, this is when lift your finger up. So if you are over the plate at this point, we're doing the exact same test. Um, but instead of the get hit result under cursor, we're doing Well, we're supposed to be doing it touch. Uh, set to the middle, move direction. Maybe I forgot to set it up for um, touch. All right, let's uh let's go check that out. Well, actually, you know, first we'll um we'll...
or did I name the same function? No, no, I just scrolled up too far. Oh, there's the touch. Yeah, get hit result at screen position. Yeah, that's the difference between the two. Um, this is get hit result under cursor and under touch, we're getting hit result at screen position. Uh, basically the same as it is in the set tetraminal move direction uh, without the end. Um, now we're just doing it when in the touch ends. Uh, so swap hold, um, it's just an if else if handling all the different combinations of null pointers that you can get. So if the tetramino hold tetramino is null and the tetramino is in play is null, then we're gonna, gonna pop one off of the queue and stick it straight into the hold and then move it over into the hold location. And oh yeah, we added over in the uh, tetra cube or tetraminal base, we added a new function and all it is doing is zeroing out the orientation, clearing all the timers and setting the position to the hold position. Uh, because what was happening is when you drag and drop, it wasn't clearing the timers. And so it would like move down or move left or right. Uh, it would just, it wouldn't be in the same position every time. Uh, so I wanted the consistency. So I zero out the rotation. Um, that's all that is. And then in the header file, we just added the function. All right, and then back in player board CPP. All right, yeah, so let's keep going through these if statements. So if the hold tetramino is null, but there is a tetramino in play, then we're setting the hold tetramino to the tetramino in play and then moving it to the hold location and then nulling out the tetramino in play. Um, we could actually probably pop off a uh, tetramino from the queue if we wanted to here. I don't know, I'll have to think about that because it kind of depends. It does affect the gameplay because if there is a tetramino in play, it won't move on to the ne next slice. Um, so if we have a tetramino in play and then we move it over to the hold, you'd have to click one extra time in practice, I don't know that it's gonna because you're probably gonna already be holding down left click, and then when you right click or drag and drop, I guess drag and drop is the only position that that will actually affect because you'll taking your finger off of the click. If you use the right click to swap the way I have it set up, um, it'll just automatically check set in. Anyway, um, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> That'll be personal preference. All right, so if there is a tetramino in hold and there's one in play, then you're basically gonna swap them. I pull it out, the tetramino into a temp, and then I swap them and move the hold in component location, and the uh, and then move it into um, the hold location and then the tetramino and play from hold into the top center. And then finally, if the hold tetramino is not null and the tetramino in play is null, then the temp is going to pop one off. We're going to push one from the queue into the hold tetramino, move it into the hold position, um, and then Make the hold, what did I, hold equals temp. We're pushing one into the hold tetramino. We have like an extra line here. Popping one into temp. Pushing one into the hold tetramino. Taking the whole tetramino, 
Oh, uh, we're setting it to the hold position. Setting it to the same position as the temp. I see what I did there. Then we're setting the hold detriment or the temp. We're setting it again. Yeah, that's an extra line right there. So we don't need that. All right. And then the rotate cube. Um, again, you can probably ignore this because I find that at least with a 10 by 10 cube, rotating it makes it more difficult. So I'm not actually calling this yet. Um, but if you choose to have it in here, uh, I'm setting a flag. B is rotating to false. It defaults to false. Then we're looping through all the blocks in play, setting the actor location by interpreting from its current location to its new in cube uh, position. Um, passing in delta time, that's the speed. And then if the block is not equal to its cube position, then we keep rotating or setting it to true if it's currently false. And if it's not rotating, then we're changing the active slice. All right. Then down here is where we're setting the rotated cube positions. So this is a little algorithm that I wrote rotate around pivot. So what we're doing is getting, we're creating an F transform, calling it pivot transform. Oh yeah, we're passing in original transform pivot location how much we're rotating it and retain orientation and then passing back out the new f transform um because we're passing in by reference there so to do that we're uh creating a new transform calling it pivot transform um, F transport transform original get rotation by the pivot location and then uh, Delta pivot to original so that's original times the inverse of the pivot transform and then the new one is Delta rotation get inverse times retain orientation um i needed that f zero uh vector zero anyways times delta pivot to original and then also uh the same thing the delta rotation uh, f transform delta rotation f vector zero oh oh that's like the pivot and multiplying by uh, anyway, if uh, if that is confusing, it's actually still confusing to me. I figured it out once and then I never looked at it again. This is actually from a previous project I did <laughs> forever ago. Um, but yeah, it's just something I carried forward. It's a, it's a useful thing to have. Um, but anyway, so we're calling it rotate around pivot. That's setting its new cube position. And then up here is where we're actually rotating. So out transform, get location. Uh, this is the blank transform that we're passing into the rotate around pivot. And then we're setting the in play position based on the new cube position. And then set in play position um, also sets the cube position because it calls it later uh, we also need to pass in the active slice i have a note in here maybe it's better to set the cube position and then calculate in play instead uh, of the other way around i don't know it works so i'm probably not going to mess with it i'm probably just going to remove that comment uh but i believe that covers everything um the only thing i did up here was uh i Put numbers in front of the categories so that they all are up at the top um, that's about it and then I added the hold mesh 
uh, and then I had to set that up in the player board, begin play. Old mesh, created a new mesh, uh, create default sub object, old mesh, and then we set up the root component. That's all that is there. And then um, the maps themselves are only changed because I updated blueprint for player board. Uh, but that covers everything. Um, so now we have sweet ability to, we can right click and save to pop one off the queue. Or we can right click from here or we can drag and drag and drop the orientation is getting reset every time perfect that's how we like and the slice is not changing until we drop the tetramino play and it starts over so uh where am i going to go from here i think i'm probably going to work on the menu system next to like actually launch the game uh then i'm probably gonna go into sound um mostly that's just gonna be like boilerplate that i'm gonna reuse for multiple projects going forward um so as far as like this specific project goes logically i'm gonna call it done um i did consider like for mobile changing the size of the cube uh that can be a project or up to you um if you feel like doing it. Um, but once I finish working my way through that boilerplate stuff, I'll set up like different one shot tutorials for those, I think, because it's gonna be like menu items. Um, but that's gonna be it for this Tetris tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, after I finish the menus, I'm gonna move on to whatever was picked in the. Uh, what's it called the uh survey for whatever i'm going to build next last i looked it was a roguelike that i think was winning um but if you haven't voted for that yet check out my community tab i do have a poll over there um for the uh next project that i work on i hope you enjoyed this video and this series and i will see you in the next one